You guys know me as the creative finance guy, but some of you guys don't know that there's way more strategies than just sub to seller finance, novation agreements. There's actually something called executory contracts that we use frequently. They're a version of creative finance that you use in very specific situations. And today we're gonna to tell you what is an executory contract and when you need to use them. So executory contracts are very uh, uh, powerful, right? You guys know sub two. If you don't know sub two, go watch our videos on sub two or subject two. Um, seller finance. The difference between these two is that the person you're buying the property from actually owes money to a bank. Seller finance is the seller or the owner you're buying the property from owes nothing to anybody. The seller, this person, is financing you. If you guys haven't watched my F-150 story, go watch the F-150 story. It's a great story to understand exactly what seller finance is, okay? In these situations, if somebody sells the property to subject to or seller finance, they're transferring something to you called ownership or in real estate, ownership is called a deed. So when I have a deed in my name, the person who has the deed is the owner. So it's very similar to buying a car, all right? So if I go and I buy a car, let's draw a really stupid car. It looks like a turtle. Does that look like a turtle or a spaceship with wheels? Okay. So I decide I'm gonna buy this car from this guy named Tommy, okay? Tommy has a car, it's on Craigslist for $9,000. In fact, we could go on Craigslist right now and pick out a car. I could call him and say, hey, do you have the title to this car? And Tommy would say, yes, I do have the title, All right? So I come along and I say, hey, I wanna buy this $9,000 car from you. I'm gonna bring $9,000 to the table and I'm gonna give you the $9,000, and what does Tommy give me in return? Is he gives me the ownership papers, which is the title in a car, right, title. So I now have the title, that means I'm the owner, the person who has title in their name is the owner of that car. Pretty simple, right? It's a simple transaction. So same thing here in seller finance, is the seller gives you the deed. Deed is who, who owns the property, and title is how they hold that property. Do I hold it in tenants in common? Am I in a partnership? Is it in an LLC? Title is how the property is held, but inside of the title, the deed, who has it? Who is the owner, okay? Deed is who, title is how. How do they own it, right? Um, who's the owner of this cell phone? Me, because I have it in my hand, right? I have, I have deed over the cell phone. How do I hold it? Well, I hold it in my pocket, that's title. I am the owner of it, it's in my pocket. How I hold that deed or how I hold that ownership, it's in my pocket, right? That is the difference between deed and title. So what's cool about this is in seller finance, when you buy on seller finance, the seller gives you the deed, you're the owner. You get the tax benefits, you get the appreciation, the depreciation, all that kind of stuff. And you make payments to the seller based on whatever agreement. Same thing in subject two, even though the seller owes, a, a, let's say they owe Wells Fargo money, in a subject to transaction, you get the deed, okay? Now, the problem with that, sometimes Wells Fargo says, hold on, you didn't pay us this money that we're owed, and you transferred the deed from this person who we gave a loan to over to this person who did not qualify for that loan. And we don't even know who that person is. And so we're going to say that's, a, that's not okay with us, and we want you to um, have this person pay off what they owe us at the bank. So that is called the due on sale clause. So if you don't know what the due on sale clause is, go watch our due on sale clause master class. We have a really great master class that's on the YouTube channel as well, um, all about due on sale clause. Now, what if I don't want the due on sale clause to be called in that situation? Well, that's where an executory contract would come in play. Let's say I take this title and this, this person, Tommy, decides, hey, I'm gonna sell this car to Pace for $9,000. We have this title. If you've ever bought or sold a car, you'll know that the title is signed by Tommy and he hands it to me. I control that title, but am I the person on title yet? I am not. Because I have not gone down to the DMV, Department of Motor Vehicles, or DVM, or whatever they call it now, or the MVD, I think they call it the MVD. So in order for you to become the actual owner of that property, you have to take the title, which you have, Tommy has already signed it over to you. What happens if I decide I'm just gonna hold the title but I don't record it? This is called an executory contract, okay? Why would I not want to record that deed or that title in my name? 
Well, in subject two, if you're worried about due on sale clause and worried about Wells Fargo finding out you're the owner, in an executory contract, the deed, instead of it being recorded in your name, you hold the deed, but you do not record it. Okay, so you actually have the deed, you control it, you maybe put it in a safety deposit box or what have you. It's literally one piece of paper, okay? I'll show you what one deed looks like, okay? I'll, I, I do this all the time. So here's a deed right here. Me, here's me holding a deed. This is one piece of paper. Maybe our editors can get this photo and pop this up on the screen, but this is a, a single deed. This is all you need to transfer ownership of real estate is a deed, okay? So if I'm worried about the due on sale clause, that's the number one reason why an executory contract benefits the buyer and also benefits the seller because it prevents the due on sale clause ever happening is buying on an executory contract. Now, um, hopefully that makes sense. Why would I do that in a car scenario? Why would it make sense in a car scenario? Well, what if I actually don't plan on ever driving this $9,000 vehicle. What if I decide that I want to sell this to somebody else and I never want to have the title come in my name? I'm just gonna pass this title to the next person and I'm going to sell this title to this person for $12,000. Could I not just take the title that was signed over by Tommy and give it to the next person and sell it to them for 12,000? Could I not just do that? You can do that. This title has been signed over. You don't notarize who the buyer is, you notarize that the seller is transferring it. So the, the seller goes on, the, now you recognize this, right? So can I do this? Pretty powerful, right? So I can decide to do this with housing as well. I don't ever have to become the actual owner on record, but if I have the title in my possession and it's been notarized and I'm holding it, who controls that asset? Whoever holds it. So what did, what did John D. Rockefeller say? John D. Rockefeller says, own nothing, control everything. Okay? So you control the title here, even though you don't own it. You control it. So you have the ability to do whatever you want with it. If you decide at any point you go down to the MVD and you want to record it, boom, you're the owner of record. But right now you control it, okay? So I can decide, I can clean up that car, I can put new wheels on it and I can go sell it for a profit, sell it for $12,000 and then that title, I just pass it over to the new owner and that new owner goes down to the MVD and they become the owner of record. So uh, we use them, number one, in real estate when we want to avoid the due on sale clause, okay? The second reason we want to buy executor with executor contracts is we don't want, okay, we don't want certain people to know we own the property or control the property. So for example, I've got a property on uh, 1006 South Southern Avenue, unit 30. I just bought this deal. It's on a recent Real Deal episode. I self-filmed that with my iPhone. And I have, a, I have a, a seller that bought a house. Check this out, this is interesting. Okay, seller buys a house. He buys a house with an FHA loan, which means how much money did he put down? Almost nothing. In fact, he didn't put any money down because not only did the FHA give him a really great loan, but he went to the state of Arizona and they gave him a down payment assistance program. Okay, so he has two loans against the property. He has the FHA loan and he has the down payment assistance program. So this guy literally bought this house for no money out of his pocket with a conventional FHA loan. Pretty cool, right? Why is this a problem? If I come along and he says, I wanna sell my property, right? He wanted to sell the property, but he has no equity. Why does he have zero equity, Eric? He just got the loan, he put no money down, and somebody else covered his down payment. So he owes more money on the house than what it's currently worth. So can he sell the property without equity? He can, but he has to come out of pocket to sell it, right? To pay agents and closing costs and all that stuff. So I come along and I go, hey, I wanna buy this property sub two. I will, I will take over these payments as long as you transfer what to me, Eric? The deed. Right, I want the deed and I'll take over your payments. I don't want my name on the loan, but I want the deed. Okay, cool, that's subject two. The problem is we get into a contract, get this nice, beautiful contract and he agrees, okay, I like, I like this sub two, this is great. We take the contract down to our title company 
And the title company does a search on the property and finds out that the seller has a down payment assistance loan against the property. Why is that a problem? It's a problem because these programs tell this, the, the, the borrower of that money that they cannot sell the house for five years without paying a massive penalty. So how can somebody sell a property to me with creative finance if they have a down payment assistance program saying he can't sell it, he can't refinance it, he can't do anything. He needs to stay in this property for five years or he's gonna have a penalty. How can he do it? Bada bing, bada boom. I can buy it on an executory contract. So the deed, I have the physical deed. In fact, this picture right here that I just showed you, that is the property that we're talking about. I control and have the physical deed in my hands. I just haven't done walking down to the MVD. It's not the MVD in real estate, it's called the county recorder's office, but I haven't walked down and recorded it even though I have full control of the asset. Okay, so I can sell the asset, I can do whatever I want with that asset. I'm currently turning it into an Airbnb. But I bought this property on an executory contract because down payment assistance program will, will not allow us to sell it or transfer the deed without incurring a massive penalty. The third reason is because a seller, okay? So let's say in a seller finance situation, the seller is unsure of you, okay? The seller is unsure of you, they don't trust you. And so they go, well, why would I sell their finance and give you the ownership of the property until you've actually paid me? And you go, well, I need to have some sort of control. If you don't wanna give me the deed, they go, okay, let's do an executory contract, which means the deed is sitting in limbo. The seller's already signed off on it, saying that you will become the future owner once you record it, but you can't record that deed until the seller decides, A, they're sure of you. Okay, this is where I, I this gets a little bit, Harry, but I call it a dating contract, okay? So a seller will date you for sometimes a year. The deed will stay in limbo. Once they feel comfortable with you, they go, okay, sure, go ahead and record the deed. Um, or, that's number one. Number two, you decide to sell it. Three, you decide to refinance it. Or four, you decide to just pay them all the way off and the deed then comes in your name, okay? So a lot of times the seller says, if I sell or finance to you, if you don't truly understand seller finance, go watch the F-150 story. I'm gonna sell or finance to you, but I don't wanna foreclose on you if you decide you're not gonna make the payments. Well, the cool thing is in an executory contract, the seller doesn't have to foreclose on you because you never had the deed in your name. So there's no foreclosure needed. The seller just takes the deed back, they rip it up, and the seller stays the owner of that property. So there's so many reasons why an executory contract is used. I would say out of let's say a hundred deals, okay? I go do a hundred deals with creative finance. I'd probably tell you 50% of them are sub two or hybrid. And I'd say about 30 to 40% of those are um, seller finance. I'd say a good 10 to 20% of those are executory contract. Now, final part of this video you need to understand. Have you learned a thing or two, Eric? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the other thing that you need to understand in executory contracts is they're actually not called executory contracts, okay? Um, in your individual state, they'll be called something different. So Arizona, an executory contract, we don't actually call them an executory contract. In fact, nobody calls them that except for attorneys, okay? Arizona, do you know what we call an ex executory contract in Arizona? It's called an agreement for sale. Okay, so we do agreement for sales all the time. Texas or Florida, okay, you can do a land contract. They're also called contract for deed. You've also got bond for deed. They're also called installment sales. And there's about five other names for these, but it depends on the state that you're in. Okay, so if you go on Google and you type in executory contracts and then your state, they'll tell you what yours is called. In Arizona, ours are called agreement for sales. Nobody calls them a land contract or contract for deed, bond for deed, installment sales here in Arizona. We're gonna do another video all about why I like executory contracts over novation agreements and novation, novation agreements are a lot more risky than an executory contract in another video. So thank you guys for being here. Hopefully you guys got some value out of this and we'll see you in the next video.